Hey guys and welcome to Government Arts, my name is Joe Barlow and today I'm going to be an illustrator creating some cogs and gears. But first, run titles. Right, so I've already got a illustrator composition set up here. As you can see, it's a artboard of a thousand by a thousand pixels. And uh, this is going to be a bit different. I don't normally do a face cam, I don't normally do uh, some sort of speak along with these, um, but here we are trying something new. <laughs> so, I'm going to go ahead and create a variety of different gears and cogs. I've got some references on my other screen, and um, I've already set up my Illustrator, how I'm going to be needing it. We're going to use the alignment tool a lot, we're going to be using the Pathfinder quite a bit, and also the properties occasionally. Um, so let's go ahead and get right into it. Now the first cog we're going to use uh, it does involve the star tool, it's a pretty simple one, we draw a star, we're still holding down the click there and we're going to press the up arrow just to add a bunch more spikes, quite a lot actually, let's go ahead and add a fair amount. Then we're going to hold down the command key or control if you're on a PC and we can uh, change the, uh, the height of the spikes. Now we're going to want them pretty short in comparison to a star um, and once we've done that I'm just going to make it a bit larger so we can see it and then align it into the center of our document. Now that does sort of look gear or cog-esque but we can make it look a bit better. We're going to go ahead and uh, make these a bit smoother and, and I think you'll agree that that's a, that's a gear at this point. Uh, what I'm next going to do is get an ellipse, center that, uh, perhaps make it a little bit bigger than what we've got there and uh, holding Alt and Shift there, just so it stays centered, selecting everything, and just uh, using our Pathfinder down here, the trim in this case, taking out the center. First gear, right? Super simple, what was that, like a minute? Uh, <laughs> so let's create another layer and create another one. I'm gonna turn this one off so we can't see it. I'm looking at my references and yeah, we'll try something new. Uh, so for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and use the Ellipse tool again. And I'm actually going to create a stroke, uh, just a black stroke in this case. And I'm going to create my ellipse. I'm going to go ahead and uh, center it. And then using the properties, um, I'm going to make that stroke a little bit thicker. And then I'm going to click into the stroke and I'm going to add some dashed lines. And you can see that looks a little bit like a gear, right? Now I've got some dashes and gaps on 50 there. And you want to make sure this one's selected at the two dashy lines. This is going to keep everything equal uh, uh, equal distance from each other and that's exactly what we want you might want to play around with some of these uh, they might be set differently for you um, but what we want is exactly how it is and uh, as you can see once again this is a gear this is exactly what we want now we could make those uh, teeth I'm gonna go ahead and call them uh, <laughs> a little bit bigger a little bit longer depending on what we want and of course we can make them further apart or nearer or thicker depending on our gaps and our dashes. That's completely up to you. Do it however you want. Um, but we're gonna just adjust the middle slightly. So, gears are weird, right? <laughs> I don't know why, but the middles are all different. You know, I suppose that's how it attaches to the mechanisms. Um, but we're gonna try and do some here. So let's get rid of the stroke. We don't need it in the center circle. And let's go ahead and uh, center that to the uh, not composition, the artboard. Not in After Effects today. Um, now, just to note out here, if we do the trim that we did before and then delete the middle, you'll see these things bite through, which is cool. It's a cool looking cog. We might want that, but in this case, I don't. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to select the outer one and I'm just going to go into Object and Expand Appearance. Now, if I go ahead and trim it, everything should say nice and neat, which is exactly what we want. Uh, I'm going to bring that inner circle in again, and what I'm going to do is just shrink it down a bit. Just shrink it down, because that that's yet another looking uh, cog. And now if I take that center again, copy and paste it, I'm uh, pressing Command-Shift-V there to paste it in exactly the position that it's in, rather than Command-V, or Control if you're on a PC. Um, and like I say, that, that pastes it directly into the place where you copied it from and that makes it all a lot easier for when we want to just go ahead and adjust it some more. So just selecting those two there, we're going to go ahead and trim and take out the middle. Another cog, second one done. Nice. 
Let's go ahead and create a third. So we're going to try something different this time. Uh, much like the previous one was different from the first, this one will be yet another variety. So I'm going to start with a circle again. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and center it. And this time I'm going to go ahead and create the center first. So let's go with, let's copy that and paste it into the center shrink it down and I'm looking at one on my references that I like the look of. I'm going to go take out the middle and then I'm going to select my rectangular uh, tool here. Create a nice little rectangle, center that. Uh, not quite long enough. Copy paste and then copy paste it again and we're going to turn it into a square this time or squarish. Is that a square? Should we measure it? No, <laughs> let's not do that. We're just gonna make it like that. And uh, then we're gonna create the gear part. So I'm gonna take that square, I'm gonna copy and paste it. And I'm gonna take it all the way up to the top here. Now, the top two parts, uh, I'm just gonna hold shift and move the arrow key in like that. So we've got like this sort of um, wedge thing and I'm gonna make sure it's centered. And what we're going to do for this one is use the rotation tool. So it brings up a little, uh, ooh, that's far too close. <laughs> it brings up a little rotation marker just here. This uh, blue in my case, I think you can probably change the color of that. So uh, it might not be blue for you, it's blue for me. Um, what we're going to do with that is oh, bring it all the way down to what we think is about the center. Now it should sort of snatch into where the center is. Um, some of you might actually even have a center marker depending on how it's set up. Again, I should have put that on really to indicate better, but that's my center. And now what I'm gonna do is press Alt and you'll see two little uh, little arrows pop up. And if we click that center point, click again, this baby comes at the rotation. Now, um, if I turn preview off, that's where it was. And when I turn preview on, it's rotated to 120 degrees. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, back a five in there and update the preview. Not enough in my in my case. I, I want it more than that. So let's go 30. See what that looks like. That's that's quite a bit. Let's go 15. Trial and error. I found a measurement that I like. So let's go ahead and press copy, and you'll see it's copied and moved it over. Now, if I press Command D uh, or Control D on a PC, that will duplicate it, and it's just doing the work for me there. Not even not even bothering. There we go. And because they were equal distances and five can be divided by uh, 360, quick maths, um, we, we end up with yet another gear. So there we go, there's there's three different gears already. Uh, let's just refresh what we've got. We've got this baby, which we made with the stroke. We made this guy, which we made with the star. And we made this one, which we made using that rotation there. Now, that's pretty much the ways that we're gonna use to make the outer of a few more gears. I think really the design of the interior of the gear is where you get a lot of variety in these. So um, I'm actually gonna go ahead and uh, let's copy this one. Do we want, yeah, let's copy this one. Go into yet another new layer and I'm gonna paste that. Just double check the center, it should be. Excellent. And I'm just gonna take a look at my references here. Let's take a look. Um, yeah, so there's a, a nice neat one here actually. Let's let's create that because that's pretty interesting. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a polygon and I want a hexagon in this case. Uh, so there it is. We're gonna center that. And then what we want is some uh, rectangles. So let's go ahead and draw one. And once we've got that, we're gonna center that as well. <laughs> a lot of centering in this, a lot of precise measurements that we don't need to worry about because of the beautiful alignment tool. Uh, now I've got this, I'm going to copy and I'm going to rotate it, so after pasting obviously, um, and we want it probably about 60 degrees, 300 there, and uh, let's see, I think it's about 60, is it going to snap for me? No, I'm going to be very careful, we're going to go about there, we're going to go about there, it's probably not quite right. Uh, but that's fine. So I'm going to select all of these elements that we just created, the hexagon and the rectangles. I'm going to use the shape mode uh, unite. Now these are all one now. These are all part of the same shape, which means we can use the, uh, the little anchors here 
to sort of just melt them together a little bit and that will give us the shape. In fact, if we just select the interior ones and ignore the exterior ones, we can probably get a nicer curve on that, which looks pretty cool, I like that. And then of course, we need to give it a little hole for the uh, mechanism to attach to whatever it's rotating on. And we're gonna use just the divide there. Could use a trim, but hey, another gear. We've got another gear with a, a pretty uh, interesting interior and what's cool about these because they're the same measurements in the teeth as the first one we did if we take that apart they should interconnect and if you're making some sort of uh, complex mechanism then mathematically that's going to work together uh, if you're taking this into after effects to animate it great brilliant that's all going to work now let's pop that back and uh what's what say you we do another one let's do another one now this time i'm going to go ahead and create yet another ellipse, <laughs> center it again. And with this one though, instead of creating that sort of wedge we did before, we're gonna to go to the polygon tool and pressing the up and down arrow keys, we're gonna create a triangle. I'm gonna hold shift to make sure it's uh, to a, a vertical um, alignment. And then I'm gonna align it vert horizontally. Ooh. <laughs> move it down to the top. And I'm gonna take the two bottom pieces, move them in a little bit like this, so I move that in by three. I'm holding shift in the arrow key there. Uh, I've only moved that two, three. And we've got ourselves a little wedge, uh, a spike this time, if you will. Similar to the star, but this is just a different way of doing it. So this is gonna be the same way we did the wedge. We're gonna use the rotation tool. We're gonna go ahead and find the center. A little bit more difficult because we've got no sort of reference on where it is. Um, in fact, let's, Let's bring up the ruler. So I'm going to press Command R to bring up the ruler. And I'm just going to pop one down there. And we should really need the, this one because we can see where the middle of that is because the uh, the triangle. So I've created some uh, references for us there. We can go back into the rotation. Grab our little thing and then snap it in there. Easy, right? <laughs> now pressing the Alt key again. And this time I'm going to go 5 update that preview yeah copy and command d command d command d command d command d control if you're on a pc and we get that starry thing we could have done this with the star tool but it's just another way of doing it right it's just a little bit different depending on what you want now i'm going to take the circle i'm going to copy paste it i'm going to bring it in and then i'm going to go ahead select the first one select that second one and uh, trim them. And I'm gonna just speed through and make some more rectangles. Uh, this time we want them fairly slim, but as long as the uh, as long as the, the gap, the radius, I don't know. <laughs> We're gonna center that. Is it the radius? That's like high school maths there, I just don't remember it. Um, bring that in like that, bring that in like that, keep rotating them until we've got like this sort of wheel effect. Now these these uh, rulers we're gonna get rid of at this point. We, we don't we don't whoop we don't need them. <laughs> That's a lot of desktops open. God I'm struggling clicking these. There we go. Uh, and the final thing I want to do is not make a square at all. I want to make a, a, a an ellipse there. Center that. This hasn't got any colour properties. Let's just give it one quickly just so you can see it. Nice lime green. Oh. <laughs> is that the colour of a tennis ball or is a tennis ball yellow? Who knows? All right, so we've gone ahead and selected what we've got left here. And I've clicked the trim, which should mean we've got yet another one, another gear. So that's five different gears, that's five different ways. And um, the interior is very much where the difference is. I'll put up a few that I've made um, previous to this of different intricate details on the interior. I'm sure you'll be able to work out how they're done. They're fairly simple, but as far as today's video goes, I, I think we're done. I hope you enjoyed that. It was a little bit different from what we normally do here on the channel. Uh, let me know if you like it in the comments down below. Um, I'm up for doing a few more little tutorials like this. They're fun, they're quick, they're nice and simple, and you can see the sort of process that I use to make things. Um, other than that, don't forget to comment, like, uh, and subscribe. Click the bell notification. I've already said comment. That's twice I've said it there. I'm begging for those comments. Uh, do be sure to do it though. I will reply. Whew. Until next time, thank you for watching. Goodbye.